Okay, so here we are once again. Before I want to start, uh, well, this piece of wood is a dowel. Well, it's a big dowel or whatever you want to call it. It's Douglas fir. You can see there's two pieces glued together there. I got this uh, from a older fellow around here. I got a bunch of dowels, bigger pieces like this. What this was used for, like this is just a piece of it. I have some pieces like eight feet tall. Um, he used to wrap those organ, those big, huge church uh, organ, like metal, wow, geez, organ pole things where the air, the noise comes out of. Jeez, I can't even think of it right now. But anyways, when I picked this stuff up, his wife, made, like, because he's a really old, he doesn't do it anymore. He's not doing so well, the, the elder fellow. But the wife's like, can you just come and get him out of there for me, please? So I went and got him. And when I was pulling him out of their little uh, storage area, he was like, you know, these are worth more than the weight in gold. So they're worth more than the weight in gold. And I was like, oh, hmm, how do you figure? But, uh, okay. So anyways, this, um, before I start talking about what I got to in here, I got this in the mail the other day. Here you go, Jordy. Love the channel. Carve on brother John, aka Wingman. And he sent me one of his patches. It's a Velcro patch. So wicked. It's got a bomb on there. It's the bomb. His channel is uh, Wingman115, guys. He does lots of outdoor stuff like crossbows and stuff like that. Real good guy, and he's just uh, starting to get into the wood carving thing. So thanks for that, bud. I appreciate it. And uh, we'll put her up here somewhere. We'll get her up. Thank you. And guys, check out his channel. Okay. So what I'm going to carve on this is going to be a tiki. I've never done one before. And um, there's a... Uh, just carved robos. We talk almost every day, guys. And uh, he was just carved robos saying I should do one with a chainsaw. Some of those big cedar pieces I got there. So, but... You know, I got this from you just carved, Rob. It's better to do a template first. Try it out on a smaller piece. See if I can even do it. Tiki shouldn't be too hard for me to do. It's just like wood spirits. It's just the outside surface carving, right? You don't need to have all this different cuts down here and cuts there and cuts here. Just kind of carve the outside of the piece. So I got these pictures online, kind of the tikis that I kind of want to do. But I'll make it my own style. It's good to print things off, guys. And uh, have reference pictures to look at which I really don't look at them when I'm doing it but I want my tiki to be have the open mouth like this but kind of I want to look more angry than this guy um kind of like this but more back and they don't show you the back sides of tikis when you look online either so I don't know what I'm gonna do with the back side but I'll figure it out you guys notice with the tikis that their nose is basically the the whole size of the piece so they got a real thick nose right and their mouth is thickest so I think the most important part of the tiki would be the teeth and the mouth. And there's a the one of got one of the guys on my um, what is it, John? I'll I'll, I'll put his name up here. Um, he's on our Carving Fusion channel, and he makes lots of uh on Facebook. The Facebook channel is Carving Fusion World of Wood Carvers. What a great community! But um, anyways, he posts lots of pictures. He does lots of tiki. He just sent me a picture of all these uh, like fence board tiki's he did, and he's got a motor home for what he's camping, and he's it's like there's probably like twenty or thirty of them on there, and uh, to protect all his wires and tubings, what he's got his motor home set up with all these tiki's on this little fence, pretty cool. So you guys, you can paint these tiki's, you can do whatever you want. So let's just get stop talking and start carving. Okay, there you guys can see like there's his teeth, he's got a big nose on there. It's going to be a sun up here if it works out, like a goat, like a little thing there for what, a little mustache thing underneath his lip, beard thing. Um, so I drew it on as I don't know as equal as I could, but my cuts I'll, I'll work it all out so everything both sides look equal. You guys, you can also get templates too and glue them on there and then carve from those, right? So I think I'm going to be making the teeth like that on this and more of a aggressive like that so i don't know we'll have to see all i'm going to do is start carving okay this is this really isn't going to be a tutorial because i haven't done this before i'll talk about key things but what i got on my uh like i said i'm running a dremel dremel for uh 4300 today on my flex shaft um i got this cut saw burr in here this is a taper burr extreme you can go to the link below get to the 
the cut saw site, use the code CFUSION to save yourself 5%. So I'm going to cut on all on the outside of these lines with this. I'm going to cut real a lot deeper beside the nose here. This is what I say with the wood spirit too, guys. This point here, from here to about here, from here to about here, if you cut that deeper, that's what's going to, and I'm going to take this back so I'll have to read, that's what will make the nose stick out farther, okay? I don't want this guy's nose to stick out too far. It doesn't have to if you look at these ones, right? The nose doesn't stick out as long as it looks like a nose. But I'm going to cut deeper from this point on both sides to make it the nose pop out. Then I'll cut this back and then redraw my lines back on there, okay? So I'm going to start cutting. Okay, there you guys can see I got all my lines cut in. Okay, nothing's perfect, nothing's equal. I can do that, try and make it them equal later, right? So I did cut deep beside the nose there. Okay, I'll have to redraw my teeth in. I'll have to draw this mustache thing in, whatever it's called, Fu Manchu thing. And uh, so what I'm gonna do now is I got my cut saw, Extreme Flame Burr, uh, 1 8 in my Dremel Flex Shaft. And I'm going to feather away all these lines to make make it so like everything's like this is going to be feathered away. I'm going to just take away all these lines here, make it so everything pops out. Okay, so in here the nose will pop out, the teeth, the mouth will pop out, like the lip. I'll take these teeth. I'll feather. I'll take all these teeth deeper in there. Take all down here deeper. I have to redraw the teeth on, like I said, and redraw this Fu Manchu thing on. Okay. Guys, also, I don't know if I already said it, but this is something easily you can carve on a stick, right? Just get some, it doesn't have to be perfectly round. Just get a stick and practice. It doesn't have to be this big. It can be that big. Just practice and enjoy it. Okay guys, so this is the part of the carving where you want to sit back, drink a coffee pop or whatever, water, and see where you are in the carving and what you need to fix. Okay, so the most important part I think on the tiki, you guys, this is a fun carving. Anybody can do it. Okay, anybody really can. It's just a surface carving. So I can see that this side of the lip is, is higher than this side, so I'll fix that. I can see that these aren't these two eyebrows. The most important part of the tiki, like I was saying, is trying to make the two sides the same. But don't stress about it. Who cares? And another thing, tikis are like wood spirits, guys. There's so many different generations, so many different, not generations, but so many different. Your tiki can be your tiki. It doesn't have to look like a freaking, like a, 
a, a real actual tiki. You can modify it how you want. That's why I decided I wanted to do it. I don't enjoy doing like real life carvings like a bear or a, or a bird that has to look like a real bird. You know, it just that's when you get stressed out. If you can do fun things like this, this is when you'll have fun. This is something that you should start carving with, like the wood spirits, because you can have fun. It can look like a piece of shit, and it still looks like a wood spirit or a tiki. Do you know what I mean? So what I got to do now is draw some lines on for the eyes, the teeth. I'll put that goatee thing back in there. And um, I'm not too sure if I'm going to do a sun up here anymore or not. So we'll see. So I'm just going to draw the lines on, and I got to let my phone charge. Okay, so you guys can see here I got my lines drawn on, okay? The nostrils, the teeth. You guys, one thing I do want to say, always your, big, your top teeth, your top set, always got to be bigger than your bottom set. You can see on that guy he did it. This guy didn't do it. That guy did it. Okay, so I think it just looks better in my opinion. Um, you see these lines here in the back? This is what I'm doing is connecting all the lines. So this cheekbone will come around here. I don't know. I don't know if it's going to work. Who knows? Just practicing, guys. This is my template for my chainsaw carving. You guys, you can do it. I trust you. I trust me. You can do it. This is not that hard. Good old Lawrence out there. Sure likes washing his truck. He washes it like six times a week. Well, it's a nice truck. I'd wash it too. Not six times a week though. Maybe once a month. Lawrence! Washing your truck again? Washing your truck again? Okay. Okay. Later. Okay, so this is what we got. So you guys can see I carved that mouth back real deep. You know, I thought I think the cool ones are the ones that have the uh, teeth carved deep. But you guys... If you're going to carve your mouth in deep like this, make sure you're experienced with your hand piece. Because, you know, when you're carving deep in here, this is when you can break your flex shaft. It could jam up, right? So make sure that, I'd say, make sure you have a little bit of experience doing this kind of stuff. Because, like I said, it can jam up in there and you'll break your flex shaft. Repeat. Okay, so that's what we got so far. Or tiki. Now I gotta figure out what I'm gonna do with the eyes. I got this guy's goatee thing cut in. I tried to, to feather away all my cut lines at this point. I still got some more in there. But so I guess I'll just uh, drink some more coffee and look at it and decide what I'm gonna do for the eyes. You guys, this is a very big thing about tiki's. You know, like your eyes don't have to look. This guy's got square triangle eyes. This guy's got round eyes. This guy's got round eyes. Nothing special, right? So, but let's see. I'll decide what I'm going to do for my eyes next here. Okay, so I really can't figure out what I'm going to do with the eyes. So I'll just kind of, I don't know, go like that and start carving, I guess. Something will come of it. Okay, so here's what we got so far. I'm just making my own thing up, guys. So, uh, you know, once I put those, it was looking like a tiki, kind of like this guy. But once I put those eyes in there, I cut, I cut them in deep with this uh, cut saw, wherever it is. Uh, this guy, it's a cone thing, extreme. Let's go straight in. So I did, after I did that, I just showed Rob, just carved Rob a picture. Check out his channel, guys, just carved Rob. And I says, I don't know if it's looking like a tiki anymore. He goes, yeah, he likes it. So I think instead of doing the sun in the top of the head to make it more like a tiki, I'm just going to do those kind of lines. See the forehead on here? So I'm going to do those lines now, just kind of like whatever, and uh, cut his teeth in. I'm going to use my high speed carver. I got the ram or, or sorry, I got the ram or this uh, micro carver. And then uh, to gap these teeth. Okay, guys, so I decided to use the master carver, high low speed carver with this real uh, coarse diamond bit. And I'm going to do this to separate the trees, okay? No, it's not trees, I mean teeth.
if you guys saw that, but the diamond bird just broke off inside the tooth here. Ow, ow, that's hot. So I guess I'll find something else to finish. At least I got the top ones done. Okay guys, when I was cutting those teeth in, like I said, uh, I showed you that I broke the burr, the diamond burr. See, it just broke off there. I don't know where the other piece is. Don't care. Um, that's my own fault because I was running at this thing at 46,000 RPMs, right? So and those things aren't meant to spin that fast, okay? So that's human error. So I got those lines cut in here. Then I think it's time to run around with my sap flap sander and uh, just kind of clean it up a bit. I'm going to polyshade this. I'm going to put uh, black paint inside here black paint inside the eyes. I could use abalone shell inside the eyes, but I just don't feel like doing that. Uh, and black paint in the nostrils. Okay. Sign it. You guys can see how I make these in my, in my playlist. This is emery cloth. Very soft stuff. This is uh, 80 grit. Okay, so I got it sounded as much as, much as I wanted to get it sounded. I spent about 10 minutes on that. That uh, flap sounder sure, sure changed my life when it comes to carving. You can also do shaping with it too, guys. Okay, so... Now I got this dollar store paint, like I always say in my videos, special carbon infusion paint tray. I won't sell this one, I'll keep this one once the paint dries. And a dollar store paintbrush. And I'm just going to paint, uh, this is acrylic paint, I'm just going to paint inside the eyes black, the nostrils black, and the mouth, inside the mouth black. And then I'll paint the top black too, just so it's not a uh, different color than the uh, poly shade that I'm going to put on. Okay guys, so I got everything in there painted black. I kind of dry brushed inside the bottom teeth there. Let's give it that. You guys, I made these nostrils really like, um, what's the word? I don't know, really nostrily because they're basically all are on the uh, tiki's. You can see big nostrils on them. So this guy's got some big nostrils too. Okay, so that's the best view, the side view. Well, I'm gonna let, wait for this wood to uh, paint to dry and then We'll put this, uh, let's see here. Royal Walnut Minwax on Poly Shade. For all you that don't know, and this is a new video, I love using this stuff, guys. It stains it, it, it stains the wood, and it protects it at the same time. You'll see when I'm done this how, how good this stuff works. Okay, guys, sorry I got a bit of my head of myself there. Uh, I put some red dollar store paint on too, acrylic, um, just to kind of give it some highlights for when I... Um, Poly shade it. So what I'm going to do right now is kind of uh, run over this uh, poly shade, uh, this red paint with this 240 sandpaper, just to kind of make it look antique. So I'll get that done there, and I'll film for a couple seconds using this poly shade. Royal Walnut. Okay, you guys can see how I got it sanded off, kind of giving it that antiquing effect. Uh, maybe I should sand that off too. That's okay. So let's just get this. Uh, Polish it on. I, I usually use the foam things, but uh, not this time. I don't know what this this color is going to look like. Actually, let me wipe it off. Yeah, you know what? That's not going to work for me. That is definitely not going to work. It's too light. So what I need to do, just finish kind of where I did this already. Now I got some darker black poly shade that I'm going to use the black, okay? I'll be back. Okay, so here's this black stuff, classic black. Because this wood is uh, not that porous, it doesn't really accept the poly shade too much. So let's hurry up and get this stuff on. Mix it up. Yeah, that will be better. But still... Where I did the, where I put the brown stuff on, the walnut on already, it will still be lighter in there. And I'm going to let this stuff really absorb in today. Usually I wipe, put it on and wipe it off really quick. Well, I guess I can. 
put it on, wipe it off quick, then hit it with my flap sander. Okay, guys, so I'll be back, okay? Okay, so here you can see it's been all poly shade. The poly shade's a little bit wet. You guys, you know, when you use the poly shade and you wipe it lots with your rag, you know, you can really get the colors back too, right? Okay, so what I'm going to do now is hit it with my little flap sander again and give it some high give it some highlights okay this one's worn down so it's kind of perfect so i'm just going to be going around here tipping those i'm going to get i'm going to make these teeth really bright so they stick out and just uh, kind of scuff it up a bit to give it some more antiquing looking effect okay Okay guys, so that's what we got. I don't know, do you think it looks like a tiki? I guess it looks like a carving fusion tiki. So when I was cleaning this up and since I actually since I started sanding it when it was just normal wood, something's been bugging me and telling me to do inside my head. Do this, Jordy, do this, Jordy, do this, Jordy. Somebody's name keeps on popping up in my head and said you gotta get this done. So one sec guys, I'll be back. I got one more thing to do. Okay guys, I'm not lying. When I was working on this piece and I put those eyes way back in there, somebody's voice was going, Jordy, Jordy, you gotta put something in the eyes, Jordy. You gotta put something in the eyes, Jordy. Well guys, guess whose voice that was that I heard throughout this whole piece. You gotta put something in through the eyes. Put something in the eyes. Just carve Rob. Jordy, you gotta put something in the eyes, Jordy. So there you go, just carved Rob. I put some abalone shell in there. Not the best setting for the abalone shell, but whatever. Just to get your voice out of my head, I put that in there. You guys, this is abalone shell, okay? This, if you want to eBay it, it's called polished two sides. Because when you buy the abalone shell, there's usually a outer casing on this shell. And I bought some with the outer casing, and I'm telling you, it was a real bitch to get off. It's not even worth it. Pete even tried tumbling it. But you want to buy the stuff called polished two sides, okay? So also, guys, when you buy this stuff, you want to buy it. Like, I don't know where I bought this stuff from. It was from eBay. But you want to make sure when you buy it, it doesn't have holes like this in it. See? If you're working on a really good carving. Don't get me wrong. You can buy the cheaper stuff with holes in it. But you want it to be a nice clear finish like you can see the little holes in there that's like right here that's a nice finish no holes and this stuff so i don't know what the color of it rainbow color there's also the white stuff that's called mother of pearl that's the kind of color that we have around here see that section there no holes but if, as you go along you're going to get always the top like but those holes, that's that's not good for me. Maybe I might use it for a chainsaw carving or something. But just to let you guys know, if you're going to buy this stuff online, just do some research about the company, right, on eBay. Or people will sell. I think this stuff's from uh, Thailand or Asia somewhere. This stuff, uh, you're not allowed to catch this stuff on, in uh, British Columbia anymore. You can get uh, huge fines if you get caught poaching these from the ocean floor. They're shell seashells, right? So it's called abalone. So there it is anyways, guys. She all done. My first tiki. I don't know what I'll do with this piece. I'll take it over when I do my next, uh, maybe in a couple weeks when I'm feeling a bit better. I'll go do a chainsaw carving of this. I'll take it over there and um, use it as a reference. Might do some changes. And then uh, maybe I'll give it away on my uh, channel here because, you know, like I spent a while on this just trying to get it right and stuff like that. And it's not really worth it for me to sell it i won't be able to get that much money so you better to gift something like this away you know and all the support that i got from my subs and members on my channel i'd rather do this in a giveaway in a two or three weeks whenever i get the chainsaw carving done okay also i know the eyes are two different little bit this side's a little bit bigger i don't give a shit do you give a shit i don't give a shit does this abalone shell give a shit it doesn't give a shit does this abalone care nope doesn't give a shit don't give a shit, guys. Just enjoy your carvings. Glad that voice is out of my head. Just carved, Rob. Uh, eyes, Jordy. You gotta put something in the eyes, Jordy.